Let's talk in more depth about extraction of cannabinoid and terpene compounds from plant material. Now to do this, it's gonna require immersing the plant material in a solvent. Uh, at that point you have like this heter heterogeneous mixture of like this plant material that's a solid and solvent, which is typically a liquid or a gas compressed into a liquid or a supercritical fluid. Um, and then in that process, through that, that immersion and soaking, the uh, compounds that are soluble in the solvent that are on the outside of the plant or inside the plant will uh, start to dissolve in the solvent. Um, and they'll do that until they, they hit the kind of max concentration they can form uh, or solubility. Um, and it'll be different for different types of compounds and for different types of solvents. And so the way to kind of think through that process is to look at intermolecular forces. And so we're going to do that for two example cannabinoids uh, and terpenes. So we're going to look at THC still and D-limonene. THC is our cannabinoid and D-limonene is one of the terpenes found in cannabis. Um, so here I have their line structures to kind of simplify them as the Lewis dot structures are very kind of crowded. Um, and I'll label these real quick. So looking at each of these, they're both going to behave as nonpolar compounds, even though THC does have a few polar bonds. There is um, a polar bond between this carbon and oxygen here. Um, and here, as well as this oxygen and hydrogen bond, creating essentially some, some overall dipole moments that kind of these little small kind of areas where there's uh, a little bit of uneven electron density. But the rest of the molecule is nonpolar with just carbon-carbon and carbon-hydrogen bonds. And so it will behave primarily as a nonpolar molecule. It also does have this um, oxygen hydrogen bond that can participate in hydrogen bonding or hydrogen interactions. So with this uh, THC compounds, we expect because of so much of it being nonpolar to dissolve in other nonpolar solvents. But the presence of that OH bond that can perform some hydrogen interactions and also a little bit of these dipole moments means I also expect there to be a little bit of solubility in more polar compounds, maybe not as polar as water. Looking at D-limonene, our terpene, we have only carbon-carbon and carbon-hydrogen bonds without anything that is polar or anything that can form a hydrogen interaction. And so with this being nonpolar, we expect D-limonene to only dissolve in nonpolar compounds. And it's unlikely it would dissolve at all in a polar compound. Our oils will all have this kind of triglyceride structure um, and will be primarily nonpolar. And so we've got these large portions that are nonpolar. And so we can easily see that both our, our THC molecule and our D-limonene would likely be able to dissolve into a fat. The structure of this triglyceride is more similar to our uh, THC than our D-limonene with a few of those polar bonds on kind of one end of the molecule. Um, and so we expect to see a higher solubility with THC. Now, what's interesting is when you have uh, a, a warm oil and you're extracting the plant material, some of those water-soluble and polar compounds will extract into the oil, especially if heated. Um, and so that kind of can create this greenness to your oil. Um, so one way that you can further uh, kind of purify your extraction is actually to then take that oil or butter or fat um, and heat it in hot water. And that will actually help the 
polar compounds like the green chlorophyll to be able to dissolve in the water while leaving behind the THC and the terpenes that would be more soluble in the fat. And that can kind of get rid of some of that greenness um, that's actually coming from more polar compounds rather than our non-polar compounds. Um, then another very common type of extraction is uh, using alcohols. Um, and here we have ethanol and we have glycerin. which are two very common tincture uh, solvents. Um, and for this, you would again, take that plant material and soak it in the ethanol or in the glycerin over a long period of time, agitating it. Um, and, and, and you can usually keep these at room temperature. Um, and in this case, we'll see extraction out into both of these compounds. However, if we look at these, I notice that these are both polar and they both have a lot of hydrogen interactions. The ethanol has fewer hydrogen interactions capable uh, because it only has that one OH bond, whereas the glycerin has three of those. Um, and so if we compare these two and the amount of THC that can be extracted into them, we can get a higher concentration of THC in the ethanol than we can the glycerin. And so glycerin tinctures will have lower concentrations of our cannabinoids. Um, and ethanol is also known to have a faster um, absorption time period into the bloodstream compared to glycerin. And so in general, ethanol tinctures will be able to absorb or have a higher concentration of THC and be more bioavailable as it's ingested. Now, a big difference for this is that ethanol is a smaller molecule um, in terms of the bioavailability. And in terms of the concentration of the THC extracted into it, the ethanol is going to be less polar. And that's going to make a very big difference for getting that nonpolar compound that has limited solubility in polar, polar solvents to actually extract into it. You will probably not be able to get our terpenes to dissolve in a high quantity in ethanol and glycerin. And so this is really a method of extracting out cannabinoids like THC um, into the solvent. Um, and you may see some of it actually come. And we do have a few terpenes that have uh, alcohol and OH incorporated into its chemical structure that would have um, slightly higher solubility in an alcohol like this. And then we have um, two nonpolar compounds, two more. We have carbon dioxide, uh, which is often used to extract cannabis plants um, as a supercritical fluid or as just a liquid. And that's only accessible when it's under pressure. And so then our gas becomes either a liquid or it becomes a supercritical fluid that has properties of both a gas and a liquid. And it'll act as a solvent and um, if plant material is submerged within it um, under pressure. And carbon dioxide is a nonpolar compound and it is very small. And so it's able to, um, typically it's able to like get into cells and really get into the material and extract out um, in a way that larger molecules can't. And so that nonpolar carbon dioxide can extract out terpenes and it can extract out cannabinoids. And one of the interesting things about carbon dioxide is that as a, uh, under pressure, it's a liquid or a supercritical fluid. But then if you just bring it back to just sea level pressures and, and just normal room temperature, it's a gas. And so it's really easy to separate that carbon dioxide solvent from the material, the, the oils that you were able to extract out of the plant material. And so then it's really a matter of extract of separating the plant material from those oils extracted out. And then the last one we have here is for BHO extractions, which are really using butane as a solvent. And this is a picture of butane. It is also nonpolar, just like our carbon dioxide. And this one doesn't even have polar bonds uh, that are just symmetrical. This one is just all nonpolar bonds between carbon and carbon or carbon and hydrogen. And so 
butane will be able to dissolve all of the nonpolar compounds in the plant material. And so the, again, that'll be our terpenes and our cannabinoids both. Now, butane, uh, the, the one disadvantage to butane versus carbon dioxide is that it definitely, it doesn't, um, it doesn't uh, separate as easily from the extracted out uh, cannabinoids and terpenes, the oil that's created. And so it's easier to have butane impurities in the final concentrated product. And butane isn't great, uh, for our health, um, as, uh, as compared to something like CO2, which is greener and a little bit safer. And so we'll go into more detail with carbon dioxide extraction and BHO extraction next week. And we'll, we'll actually look at those, like the extraction processes that happen on an industrial scale, the tincture creation with alcohol and creating, um, extracts into oil, butter, or coconut oil are things that are typically more done in the home kitchen, but also done um, as a way of uh, processing, especially the oils, uh, cannabis into edibles um, or something that you would drop on your tongue with a tincture, something like that. And so um, we'll go into more detail on the industrial scale levels of these. Ethanol can also be used on an industrial level, um, especially cold ethanol extraction. And we'll talk about that in more detail too. There's another way to use solubility um, to extract out cannabinoids as well and terpenes. And this is a little bit different though. Um, so in the previous examples, we were really looking at solubility and here we're taking advantage of things being not soluble in each other. So water is very polar and forms a lot of hydrogen interactions. And so it is not the best solvent for our cannabinoids and our terpenes. Um, in fact, they're, they're not going to be very soluble at all or at all. And so you can take advantage of that in a mechanical process to separate the oily trichromes that are on the outside of the plant from the rest of the plant using water. This also takes advantage of the fact that the oily trichromes are uh, denser than the water, so they sink to the bottom. And so using cold water to really, really make sure we don't have any of this dissolving in our um, water, right? So we're taking advantage of that temperature dependence of solubility and using ice cold water to make bubble hash. Um, and you take plant material and you add it into ice water uh, with mesh bags. And uh, by agitating it, the oily parts of the plant separate and they sink to the bottom through the mesh. And then you can collect that. It won't dissolve in the water. So it's easy to separate the water from the trichromes. And you can press that into hash of varying qualities, depending on kind of the mesh size, the, uh, the size of the, oh, the holes in the mesh of the bag. And so this method, it's a mechanical process, is really taking advantage of uh, like not dissolving and unlike, or, or this like dissolves like uh, concept that we've been talking about.